Hiding drugs in false fuel tanks is not uncommon. Once the Coast Guard uncovered this technique, the smugglers upped the ante again by developing the submersible, either a tank towed behind a vessel that can be cut loose in the event of an interdiction, or even a high-tech submarine. This three-man underwater vessel is very sophisticated with two engines plus a navigation system. It was caught by luck when a Colombian Coast Guard crew noticed the round radar housing just above the waves. The sub was carrying 1,000 kilos or $22 million worth of cocaine. This is the only one that has been caught so far, but law enforcement officials believe there may be many more out there, just like this one. Another technique is hiding the contraband in extremely large vessels, burying it deep within the ship's stated cargo. The Khan, a 580-foot Panamanian-flagged vessel, is stopped by a Gulf-based Lidette team 125 miles southwest of Jamaica. What does that say? The bulk carrier is loaded with 26,000 metric tons of iron ore. Five feet under the ore in cargo hold number two, the boarding team finds cocaine bales. In the end, they seize approximately 9,500 pounds of cocaine with a street value of up to $186 million. Tossing drugs overboard when facing potential capture is not an uncommon tactic. And some smugglers have resorted to more extreme measures to destroy the evidence, including torching their boats with the contraband and sometimes even the crew still on board. The boldest maneuver by smugglers to date is the use of the GoFast. Almost a highway of fast boats from Colombia to uh, Espanol. They're capable of doing 50 miles an hour. They're, they're uh, 35 or 40 foot boats. A crew of three or four people can carry about a thousand kilos of narcotics, generally cocaine, in a compartment built to keep it dry. The crew wears uh, shorty wetsuits to protect themselves from exposure. They wear goggles and they will not stop. They understand the limits of our authority at sea. Naturally, the Coast Guard isn't standing still. It's responding with its own go fast. The deployable pursuit boat, or DPB. But how fast can it go? The speed right now we're not revealing, but uh, they are capable of keeping up with the threat that's out there at sea. The team on board the DPB is strapped in with a three-point harness system, similar to those in a race car or an offshore race boat. Without it, the team could not handle the stress of riding at high speeds in high seas. Even the most experienced coxswains will have to go through additional training before they can see real duty in a DPB. Anything above about three and a half or four on those tabs, it's above the bottom of the boat. So anything above that, it's not doing anything. Keep it at four grand. You gotta have to watch both throttles because as you see, the throttles aren't set the same. Special training is the first step. The DPB team also requires special equipment, a lighter, smaller life vest, and a smaller rifle which can be effectively used in the confined space of the boat. It's a uh, standard M4 issue in the military. Uh, this is what we're currently uh, evaluating as the standard issue long rifle. How does it perform? It performs just like any other uh, standard M16 rifle. Uh, really the only difference is the length of the rifle that would affect the ballistics. Um, our main concern is the, uh, the size of it. So really we're getting the same ballistics, we're using the same ammo. Um, it's the same training inherent for the crew because of all the, the trigger, the safeties, uh, the ammo is all handled the same. With the DPB, the Coast Guard is confident they've again met the criminal threat head on. <laughs> 